My name is Michael Christensen. I'm a professor in the Department of Clinical Pharmacy and Translational Sciences at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, and I am a clinical pharmacist and director of the Parental Nutrition Support Service at Lebonner Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm a board-certified nutrition support pharmacist, and I'm a member of the Aspen PN Safety Committee as well as the Aspen Board of Directors. The one disclosure I would like to make is that I'm a member of the Fresenius Cavi Data Safety and Monitoring Board for their pediatric SMOF lipid studies. I was the principal investigator for a lipid injectable emulsion survey with gap analysis that was conducted on behalf of Aspen by the Parenteral Nutrition Safety Committee. My co-investigators for the IV lipid study are listed on this slide. The results of the survey were published in Nutrition and Clinical Practice in October 2017. As a companion to the published article, myself and three of my co-authors, Drs. Phil Ayers, Beverly Holcomb, and Kathleen Gura, have created four 10 to 15 minute informational videos. In these videos, we will provide an overview of the survey results. We will be discussing our findings on IV lipid administration practices, the use of filters when administering IV lipids, and the practice of repackaging IV lipids. The videos will cover study background, present the current practice results with figures, tables, and illustrations. We will be discussing the implication of these results and will end with best practice recommendations. There are no continuing education credits for this video series. References and resources are available at the end of each presentation. The creation of these videos were made possible in part by an unrestricted educational grant from Fresenius Cavi. IV lipid emulsions are an integral part of parenteral nutrition, administered either as a separate infusion or combined with the dextrose amino acid solution as a total nutrient admixture to provide both energy and to provide a source of essential fatty acids. The impetus for this survey was Aspen recently published safety consensus guidelines for parenteral nutrition, as well as clinical guidelines for PN ordering, compounding, labeling, and dispensing. Also, the FDA recently approved new IV lipid products and revised labeling to include the use of a 1.2 micron filter with administration. The Aspen PN Safety Committee wanted to assess the current prescribing, preparation, and administration practices of IV lipids in different health care settings and prepare a gap analysis between current practice and published recommendations and guidelines. This survey was sent via email with a SurveyMonkey web link to Aspen members in the United States. The survey was kept open for one month during October and November 2016. We sent two email reminders during this period. The survey consisted of 70 questions divided into four domains. Clinicians answered questions in their area of practice which covered three predominant age ranges, adults, pediatrics, and infants and neonates. There were five questions about the respondent demographics, 21 questions related to adult patient care, 22 questions related to pediatric patient care, and 22 questions related to neonatal and infant patient care. The study was approved by the University of Tennessee IRB. The survey was sent to 5,487 U.S. Aspen members and there were 670 responses for a 12% response rate. First looking at the respondent characteristics, 66% were dietitians. Pharmacists comprise 25% of the respondents, physicians 5%, nurses and nurse practitioners 3%, and 1% were other and included physician assistants. 83% of the respondents reported working in an acute care hospital, 9% in home care or home infusion, 3% in long-term acute care hospitals, and 3% in outpatient clinic or physician offices. Less than 1% worked in skilled nursing facilities or rehab hospitals. When asked about the areas of patient care responsibilities, 
62% of respondents care for both critically ill and non-critically ill patients. 21% care for only critically ill patients, whereas 12% care for home or outpatients. Finally, 5% care only for non-critically ill patients. When asked to select the age group for which they provide care, there were more responses than respondents, indicating that many respondents care for more than one age group. 62% indicated they care for adult patients, 19% for pediatric patients, and 19% cared for infants and neonates. The primary reason for providing IV lipids was as an energy source in all three age groups. The responses ranged from 53 to 73%. The least important reason in adults was to prevent or treat essential fatty acid deficiency. In pediatric and infants, the least important reason was to decrease the dextrose load. The primary reason for not providing IV lipids in all three age categories was an elevated triglyceride level. The responses ranged from 63 to 69%. The next most common reason for not providing IV lipids in adult patients was the patients were receiving lipids through medications like propofol, followed by the patients were receiving enteral or oral diet. For pediatrics and infants, the next most common reason for not providing IV lipids was the patient was receiving enteral or oral diet. Avoiding IV lipids because of liver disease was listed for 27% of respondents caring for adults, 39% caring for pediatrics, and 38% caring for infants. When IV lipids were restricted, energy needs in adults were met by increasing first the dextrose and amino acids, followed by increasing in enteral or oral diets. In contrast, pediatric infant caregivers responded they increased enteral or oral calories, followed by increasing dextrose and amino acids. When respondents were asked to rank what were the most important influences on their decisions to provide IV lipids, 50% chose Aspen, the Society of Critical Care Medicine, or other organizational guidelines. 16% chose published literature to guide their decisions, 14% chose practice experience, and 9% chose nutrition support team or committee policy. Here are the resources and references that are available as background and best practices for IV lipid use. I would like to thank you for your participation in part one of this video series.